Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event, um, webinar, webcast, online show. Um, we do this here every live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are unable to join us, that's fine. We also uh, record our show every week and post the recording to our website afterwards. So you will always be able to go there and see any of the previous shows we've done that you uh, weren't able to see on Wednesdays. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, book reviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of various products and services. Um, Basically, anything library-related, we are happy to have on the show. Um, we have a Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, but sometimes we bring in guest speakers, as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us remotely from um, just west of here, Hastings uh, Public Library, is Jake Rundle. Hi, Jake. Good morning. Good morning. Um, he's there. Uh, is your title there te technology librarian, or what is your – is that what you are called out there? <laughs> Technology Lightning is my official title. Official, okay. And, and what does that exactly mean? Um, well, it's kind of the catch-all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it sounds nice and vague and open-ended. <laughs> I'm in charge of collection development. I'm in charge of the ILS. Um, I oversee um, the circulation coordinator, mm -hmm. and then she oversees the desk, so... I'm kind of the de facto. All over the yeah. place, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And sometimes I do story times. So. Ooh, nice. That's a fun. <laughs> Um, and Jake's with us this morning to talk about, as you can see there on the slide, the Central the Central Nebraska Digital Co-op, um, which a, a group of libraries getting together to do some getting some discounts on purchasing certain products. And I'll just hand it over to you to explain it all um, to everyone. Sounds good. Well, good morning, all. Uh, like Chris has said, my name is Jake Rundle, tech, uh, technology librarian at Hastings Public Library. Um, and I just want to talk about the Central Nebraska Digital Co-op. Uh, it's our little group of libraries. Uh, we're actually 20, 20 small now. It's just kind of a small group compared to when you talk to some libraries who do other consortial work. Um, but we're just a group of libraries that work with vendors um, to get the best deal for all of us. Uh, so that products and services um, mostly offered digitally can be made affordable for everybody. Uh, so the one page of history that I have uh, is in 2012 or in 2013, um, Carnegie Allen Hastings and Holdridge got together at my request because I wanted Zinio magazines from my library, but it was too expensive to pay the platform and pay for the content all by ourselves. So I negotiated with our vendor to let all four of us go together. We would split the content. We'd each play a platform fee, but we'd get more content for less money since we were splitting it. And the other three libraries thought this was a great idea, and uh, the vendor said, sure, that seems reasonable. The only, the only thing we'll do is they have to have at least 100 titles, which we thought, well, that's reasonable uh, because we wanted a big collection anyway. Um, and so we did that for two years, um, pretty pretty low key, uh, and then some other libraries east of us, outside of Central Nebraska, found out about a group and wanted to join in because they were paying through the nose for Zinio, and they thought, and they rightfully so said, "Hey, can we join you?" And so um, we talked with our record books rep, and they had no problems with it. So we added Ralston and Papillion and Bellevue and York and Columbus, um, and I feel like there's one more in there, but I just can't think of what it is, actually, because um, we got to 10. Uh, North Platte. And then uh, when we added Ralston and Papillion, they also had One Click Digital, which is streaming audio uh, through recorded books. Um, it's uh, They purchase uh, subscription content, so it's about six 800 recorded books, downloadable titles that are simultaneously checkoutable. Um, with a two-week due date. So when they joined, we rolled that product into us as well um, because they didn't want to lose it. And again, we could split the cost of the subscription uh, and make it cheap for everybody. And I'm sure Recorded Books didn't want to lose it either, lose all those uh, exactly. deals with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And since then, we've, we've used our group buying power uh, when the state uh, signed deals with EBSCO for all the new databases. Some of us had, who were purchasing Novelist on our own uh, didn't have to anymore. So what EBSCO did is said, hey, we'll give you all uh, a, a discount. The way it worked was they, they said, hey, we'll give you a discount, but you don't all have to participate if you don't want to. So we got the group purchase price for without having the whole group have to go in. So we got Novelist Select. Um, I and some other libraries in, uh, I believe Carney did, I believe Columbus took us took up on that. Um, but it was just a nice way for us to get a discounted price at uh, without having to have the entire group go in. And since then, we've had conversations with people at Hoopla, uh, Midwest Tape. Um, we've had... Um, some conversation. I had a, a webinar the other day with the Gale Virtual Resource Library um, in uh, for their book platform, 3M's Cloud Library, uh, and who was the other one? Um, a few others. Oh, um, Access 360 through Baker and Taylor. Um, so it's just it's a nice way for us to all. Um, get demos and and potentially go in together and, and buy cool digital products uh, to offer our patrons the best for the lowest price. Uh, and so the important part of this whole presentation was I was going to show you the kinds of things that we have because it's always better to show than to just talk for an hour. So the first one I wanted to show was uh, Zinio Magazines. So since the other libraries have joined. We have increased the collection from 100. We started with 115 magazines, and now we are up to, I think, 137 to 145. And it kind of changes year to year as titles drop off and new titles come on that we want to buy. Um, I like to explain that uh, we have magazine titles for all types, gifted and challenged. We have your astronomies and your American crafts, and then we have your... Um, Let's see, your Vanity Fairs, your Teen Vogues, uh, I think we have Us Weekly. It's been a while since I looked. Uh, your Star Magazines, so we've got your, yeah, we do have Us Weekly. So if you want your Adele Gossip and your Charlie Sheens, that's great. Um, we have a number of magazine titles in Spanish languages, like Vanidades, USA, and... Um, Rolling Stone and um, Esquire and Cosmopolitan, um, the Mexican or the Spanish language publications of those, um, because we wanted to be able to uh, offer a diverse collection uh, for all patrons, um, and it just worked out really great that we could do it cheaply. Uh, the other nice thing is that since we're all sharing the content, um, we can all buy kind of those specialized titles that we wouldn't have. So we have a, a diabetic uh, cookbook magazine. We have a skateboarding magazine. We've got uh, it's a Smithsonian magazine, um, and that's just this page. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's trying to work together to make cheap all the good things. Uh, magazines are simultaneous access, so that means that myself, and 6,500 other people in the various communities can all check out Marie Claire and Men's Health, um, and we can all keep it forever. Uh, it lives in the cloud. I can download it to a device. I can open up the Zinio app on, uh, on my iPad, on my phone, and read it there. Uh, I can read it here in the web. Uh, and the great part is that really the simultaneous access. I mean, magazines in libraries have a very finite shelf life because they're not printed on the best stuff and they're not that sturdy. You know, Circs ten times and then it's lost its cover and you're taping things together, restapling and, you know, Frankensteining it back to life. Um, so this is a way for us to offer magazines where the people want them, uh, anytime they want them. The other thing I wanted to show with Zinio is our admin portal. So what's great about Zinio admin portal is that I can go into reports 
and I can grab my report for who's joining uh, the service, or I can just get circulation reports. Um, it's <laughs> excitingly uh, and and also terribly is when we added uh, the ten new libraries at the end of October. We added them to Zinio, so they each had their own barcode, so that you could uh, create new users. And so the way that uh, most libraries of, are filtering their their circulation checkouts are by barcode. So now it's just a lot more sorting <laughs> than than I'm used to because I have ten extra library barcodes to dig through. So and in this, what can each library see their own statistics then by using that? Yes. Is that how I mean, you can some, figure out who's has, who's? Yep. So. I just open it in Excel, which in my Mac is numbers, so it's going to be weird. But then I just sort out, um, see, because it has your library's barcode right there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm 20604, I just find all of those, and then I can just get my monthly stats right there. Nice. Um, group monthly stats for the month of October, uh, or November, excuse me. Holy cow. Um, we checked out 1,200 magazines between 20 libraries. Um, which is really healthy circulation for magazines, truthfully. Um, the other nice thing is uh, the admin portal lets you add other kinds of filters. We do primarily barcode filtering so that your library's barcode prefix um, and the length of your barcode can be made so you can create a username. You can also do HTTP referrals. So if you just want someone to be able to sign up by coming from your library's website, you can do that. If you want to have an IP address range um, be your filtering, you can do that. Uh, and then uh, well, that's not the fun one. <laughs> the the other great thing is Record Books makes a lot of marketing stuff available. Um, so well, they used to, yeah. Uh, they have user's guides made up, so you can just print those straight off and give them straight to your patrons. Um, they have um, an entire marketing site you can go to and um, pull up posters and stickers and shelf talkers and uh, desk mats and the whole, the whole shebang, uh, essentially, to explain to your patrons that you've added this great service and that... Um, this is how you access it. Additionally, we put our Zinio collection in alphabetical order uh, because it's just easier for, for all of us. Um, but from here, you can also rearrange your order to be whatever you want it to be. Um, and if you join the group and you already have Zinio, then um, you actually be you get rolled in as a a child library under the parent of the, the co-op. So um, you actually keep your own admin portal and you just get a whole bunch of magazine titles added to you. Um, it works out really well because you don't have to do a lot of you don't have to do a lot of sorting because you still have your own dedicated website to get there. Um, Krista, can I kind of go out of turn and say ask if there's any questions about Zinio? No, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions about Zinio? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? You can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface um, if you do have any questions about this service, because I assume, as you said, you're going to show each of the services that you guys have in the group. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Nobody's typed in anything yet. Okay. But if they do, I will be sure to interrupt you and let you know. <laughs> Perfect. The other product we have is one-click digital, downloadable, streamable audiobooks. Um, kind of the theme of the co-op is to access items that don't have a weight limit on it. So, for instance, we all have access to OverDrive, but since we share that with the, the billion other libraries in the state of Nebraska, there's lots of there's there's times where you want to check something out, but you have to put it on hold. Um, not the end of the world, but sometimes inconvenient if you wanted something right now. Uh, 
I'm waiting for an audiobook, and I've been waiting for two whole weeks, and it's killing me. And that's <laughs> that's not even a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to wait patiently for it to get here. But the nice thing about a majority of the one-click titles is that they are all simultaneously accessible and downloadable. So again, um, you and me and Krista and everyone else could download the disgraceful Mr. Ravenhurst and listen to it, and then it'll return when you're done. Um, there are there's a small collection of materials in one click that are not simultaneous access because libraries um, who have a a recorded book standing order where physical product comes to their library have the option to bundle it with the digital for about 10% more off the physical price. For 10% more of that you get the digital copy and those are one to one. So like we have, I think that's how you spell it, maybe. Mm -hmm. We want Fifty Shades of Grey again. There it is. To that. So Grey is a bundled title. It's checked out right now, so I have to place. Oh, it's not checked out right now. Awesome. So I can check that out. Um, once I check it out, if you went to try to check it out, it would say there's a hold on it. I can check it out anywhere from one to fourteen days, um, and then I have the option to renew it as long as no one else is on hold for it. Uh, the other great part about the two collections that we buy for One Click Digital is that they are always adding titles. We order we, we have the, the adult collection and the children's collection, um, which essentially means the adult collection is about 5,000 audiobooks at this point, and the children's collection is somewhere around 28 at this point. So they're, they're, they're pushing closer to... to 8,000, 9,000 audiobooks at all the time. Um, it's not doing. Um, but it's not like I have to pay more. I pay my subscription fee. Every quarter they add their additional ego, their additional audiobook content, and that's just available for me. It's it's they're slowly making a lot of the recorded books back catalog available. And can you add specific titles if you want ones that aren't automatically being added, or is it just what they want to yeah. put in there? No, I. Uh, there is the ability. They have. I mean, everything that recorded books could get you physical or digital. You can also purchase the Green Glass Houses one. Um, somebody needed it for. Uh, a book report they were doing and the physical copy was checked out and our audio copy was checked out so I got on here it was inexpensive I bought it my library paid you know 40 bucks for it and so again it's a one-to-one -one copy yes. it's, not the, mm -hmm. it's not the the simultaneous access but um, if a library wanted to go in and um, purchase you know a run of a series that their patrons liked and would want to see. Um, you share that content with the group, mm -hmm. but it's a smaller group than Overdrive's group, and um, it it really only benefits you because other libraries are doing the same thing, so everyone wins. And how long uh, you said so you kind of <clears throat> so you did like adding this the Green Glass House one was like an on the fly edition. How long did it take for you to get it actually, and from when you found out this person needed it to have it available in the collection? It was available in the collection 20 minutes later. That's awesome. <laughs> Which is the thing I like the yeah. best, because when I do my Overdrive Advantage purchases, it says titles will show up up to 24 hours later. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those things where um, it said there would be a lag time, and then we were standing around, and I checked, and there it was, ready to go. Wow, so, nice. Uh, it's, a nice it's a nice quick turnaround, um, and that's always just neat. And it so it allows you to be super flexible with your collection development. If you need something now, buy a copy, and it shows up, and you can have the patron walk out the door with it on their phone, on their iPad, um, checked out and ready to go for them on their computer when they get home kind of thing. Uh, registration for both products is really simple um, because it's library barcode prefix. 
all you need is the library card number, you make a username and a password, and you put in some personal information, um, and then you hit go and you're done. Um, a lot of the well, the personal information is mostly so that if you have, um, you need to reset your password, or if you've forgotten your password and you need uh, one of your your library's administrator to reset your password, they have some things to find, uh, and they want your zip code because one of the reports in one click is uh, downloads by zip code, which is nice for us out here, but more tricky for libraries in the east who have patrons in three different zip codes, with other libraries in those same zip codes. Uh, let me just show you the admin portal. So the dashboard is newly added audio, and that's newly added for recorded books to sell me. So um, I can look at the top holds for my library. I can look at what's popular. Um, some titles have a circle alert, um, none that we have purchased so far. Uh, but if you wanted, if you had any that had a number of circulations before it expired or went for two years and then expired, you could get those kinds of things. Um, you can do an advanced search if you're, for instance, searching for titles that you wanted to purchase. Um, and that's just, I mean, everyone loves Baldacci books. $60 for the audiobook. Um, if you happen to be purchasing it with a physical bundle, um, titles are much cheaper. Um, it's kind of it's it's interesting in that record books has made it so that it 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 kind of behooves you to buy both because to not do it is I mean to buy the physical by itself and then the digital by itself is twice the cost um, so if you just do it all at once and I mean that's smart business on their part but it's also really good for the library because it makes makes everything a little cheaper. I can do patron search. You can set up rotator ads. So if a library had a specific event that they wanted to 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 uh, promote, they could make an ad so that on the front page of um, when the patrons go in, it would show up that thing, uh, show up for that library. Um, we haven't done that yet since we're kind of a disparate group of people all across the state. But I think um, it's something we're going to work towards because. It's if the patrons are going to be there grabbing your stuff, you should be telling them about your other things too. Um, so we need to be so showing off our other events, even if you know potentially a bunch of people in Carney are going to see my Hastings event. Yeah, too bad, so sad. Um, oh, someone does have a suggestion for that because you did say okay. there's like you guys are all you know, separate libraries, you could advertise the One Book, One Nebraska statewide mm. program. Put a little thing mm -hmm. in there about that. And I, is that is the One Book, One Nebraska in there? That would be a What's question. The um, oh, what is it? Well, it depends on you mean the current one or the upcoming one. Um, mm, what's the upcoming one? Let's see. Da, 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 da. I think I should know this off that minute. Right now, it's the Death Zones and Darling Spies. Um, the upcoming one for next year will be the Meaning of Names. Let's just see if I can buy it. Oh, goodness. Um. <laughs> Who's the author? That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Karen Gettert, G-E-T-T-E-R-T. -T -T -E Wait, Shoemaker, Karen Gettert Shoemaker. 
actually. Uh, I'm not sure which is considered. She's got two last names. Try Shoemaker, I guess. S H O E M A K E R. But Karen, yeah. Mm. Ah, that would be something to ask about then. Maybe they could add that if they don't. <laughs> But that's the one that's going to be the one for 2016, and the current one is the uh, Beverly Keevers, Death Zones, and Darling Spies. Anyway, just yeah, just that be good because that's something like I said. Even though you've got a bunch of libraries, they could all be having people participate in that particular program. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, two for oh for two today. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, some of the other great. Uh, well, I clicked on purchasing tools, so we'll go to that one first. Um, but the reporting tools, you can uh, record books, mix their their high, their their upcoming audiobooks, ebooks. Um, one click digital used to be downloadable, and then there was a second one click digital that was for the the ebook portion because recorded books got into the ebook game just like everyone else did. Um, so we don't currently purchase ebooks uh, because Ebooks have a lot of the weird, you know, all the weird stuff, 24 checkouts or two-year contractual obligation stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's kind of, and it's it's mostly one-to-one, -one, whereas a lot of this is all simultaneous access. But I mean, it's potential to be another avenue for ebooks is there, um, should the libraries want to spend some money on it. So, and they recently made it so that. Those two apps could now work as just one app, so they they really kind of overhauled their whole tech system. And then, as far as reporting, you can get patrons, so you can sort out how many patrons are using using it from your library. Um, there is a patron recommendations feature coming soon, um, so that titles that are not in our collection but available from recorded books will pop up like OverDrive used to do. Um, and then that'll feed to the to the admins at the libraries to make those decisions. Um, I can do holds. I can do checkouts by zip code. Um, the one I do to find out how many things have been checked out from a library is patron downloads. And it'll pop up blocked. Pish posh. Go. And then you can sort again by your barcode, and then you can just find your checkouts right there. Um, there's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are the two products, and there are two admin portals. Um, I guess probably the important question that a lot of people have is price. Um, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, and so what we do is we put your information into what we call Steve's Magical Formula. Steve Fosselman from Grand Island Public Library made this great formula that takes your library's uh, legal service population, your um, total annual total annual operating budget, and your total circulations as reported on the library statistics for whatever year's most available. Uh, it sums all those things together and gives you your score, and then you pay the percentage of um, the sum, essentially. So Norfolk is 9.27% of this total criteria score, so they pay 9.27% of the cost of the stuff. So right now, all of our things cost around $37,959, so all these libraries pay this much. If, um, for instance, Blue Hill, um, when we put their data into the formula, um, they come up as paying $97, I think, for the, the whole kit and caboodle because they're so small. Um, so what we did was said if you are under that, um, under $500, you just pay a $500 buy-in, like the lowest... Um, the lowest buy-in for overdrive. So, so it's like a minimum minimum kind of fee. Yeah, it's yeah. minimum, yeah, minimum buy-in of 500. Um, and then um, if you're over that, then it's it's the percentage of the total. 
And what's nice is that as we add more libraries, your percentage drops because you know you add more people. Um, so last year, um, Hastings paid thirty-five hundred dollars for Zinio in one click, and this year we only have to pay twenty-seven. So it it's dropped substantially because we added um, North Platte and Norfolk and La Vista and Sydney and Beatrice and Bennington and all these other libraries. So the more people we add, the cheaper it gets, and uh, really just the more fun we can have because it's it's a bigger group. So then you can go to other vendors and say, we're this big now. Um, we have this much purchasing power as a as a Big group. What mm -hmm. kind of deals can you make for us? Uh, yeah. So, and obviously, so looking at this, one of the questions I had was, who can join? And um, does that be any? Uh, so, who who can join this? I mean, it's called the Central Nebraska. Obviously, that is no not a definition, is, a description yeah. of who is um, in it. That's just where it started now. <laughs> yeah. Um, any accredited Nebraska library is. Um, we kind of went the overdrive route and and thought that if you have accreditation from the commission. Um, and you are okay. in Nebraska. You're you're welcome to join. So any accredited public library it has to be public. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Because it's public I, library accreditation as we do. We don't accredit any other types of libraries. You know, I don't think yeah. we ever really made that distinction. I suppose if a college wanted to join, we wouldn't mm -hmm. be opposed. But nobody's asked most, yet. <laughs> nobody's asked yet. And I, I know most of the colleges in the state have a public library in their community that services them. So right, it, this kind of things they would send their people there anyways. Yeah. 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 Plus, it's more public. Li it's more public library content stuff. Definitely, yeah. But we do go to the. Co I go to Hastings College all the time, and let students know that we have 150, 147 digital magazines that they can check out if they just sign up for a library card with us. So, uh, it it then makes the public library look really sexy to a bunch of twenty somethings because you're like, look at these shiny magazines you can read on your iPad. <laughs> and that's how um, we sell ourselves: look sexier. Exactly. Uh, the only the only stipulation is we can't have Lincoln or Omaha join because they're too big and they would bump us up to the next the, the next payment tier. Ah, mm -hmm. So okay, yeah. Not Lincoln, not Omaha, but we can essentially take anyone else because. All of us together wouldn't, couldn't possibly go over the next. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, Record Books uses circulation as their criteria for charging mm -hmm. people. So. Right. And what's nice is that the, since we go straight off of the public library profile done by the commission based on everyone's statistics that they've sent in, mm -hmm. um, any vendor that's doing any any kind of work, with the exception of the, the vendors who use Active Borrower as their as their their, their magic number, um, since that one's kind of a waffly number depending on which library. Mm -hmm. But we've got the, the 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 data right there, so that if they say, "Oh, well, we do based on legal service populations," so we say, "Okay, well, we serve boom this many people." So I haven't summed that column, so <laughs> I guess That's I can okay. tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions for the good of the? Uh, I, don't know, I guess. Yeah. Do anybody have any yeah. questions about um, the pricing and how they're doing this? Type into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Or if you have a microphone, I can unmute you, and you can use your own microphone to ask your question as well. We can do that. Um, While well, we're waiting to see if anybody does have questions, right now you said you've got you've got just the two products, the Zinio and the one yes. click. Um, but Zinio you said. But you said you've talked, you're talk in talks or have talked to other ones. Do you know, um, have any idea about what might be coming up, or that's still um, in process too much? It's still in process. The the video and the one click are the two products that are the the requirement of sorts, and so that the whole group has agreed that these two products will purchase. So mm -hmm. um, as we get bigger, or as other um, vendors talk to us, there might be additional products that if a group, as, if as a group we decide we want that to be a, a required product, um, we'll add that to it. Um, and so a, a lot of what we're doing right now has just been uh, we, we come as a group 
um, and say we're interested, um, but we can't all buy in, and then they give us uh, a breakdown kind of of a group pricing. Uh, the other one I couldn't think of earlier was Lynda.com. Mm. So, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we did is um, they, they they looked at our total group and said, okay, this is how big you are. So if Carney wanted to do it, it would be this much money for this many seats, as opposed to um, having us all buy in and sh and and do it that way. Um, which is which is also really great because then it gives flexibility. Because if your library, if Lexington, for instance, doesn't want to do that, then they're not they're not forced to buy something they're not interested in because they want those other products for free, or you know, for, or because they, they want Xeno in one click, but they don't want the Gale Virtual Resource Library. You know, it's not that right. you have to do that. It's we're just we're just kind of a a clearinghouse for for cheap deals and trying to find <laughs> the best fit for the best libraries and vendors. Right. Similar to the the group, just group um, things that we do here at the commission. Same thing. We try and yes. coordinate it on behalf of the libraries so they don't have to each do it on their own. Exactly. Yeah. I was just I was just too impatient to to ask the library. <laughs> first so it's okay and that's uh, what I say you, so you just came up with this idea and thought it would be cool for a few libraries um, and it's kind of been a victim of your success it's getting a yeah. little yeah but yeah, you're still doing okay you're not gonna you're not overwhelmed with it I hope <laughs> no it's, it's not, not too overwhelming because outside of the making sure that everyone knows what they're being invoiced and making sure invoices go to the right library. I really get to be hands off on it and I leave a lot of that to recorded books and to There's not a lot of not a lot of collection development along needing to be needed to be done because it's all right. collections already pre made. Yeah. Yep. And then in January we look at what magazines checked out, what magazines didn't check out. Um, and we, we, I send a big group email to everyone that says, okay, here's the top circling magazines, here's the bottom circling magazines, here's the list of everything that's available. What do you want to add? What do you want to get rid of? What are we keeping? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the hard part, but that's all group consensus, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, the part, the, for the most part, the collection stays the same, except for we drop off, you know, three magazines that didn't check out anymore, and yeah. then the library wants to add one, and we say, well, okay. Perfect. So, balances out. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, when you were just the small, I think you started with four. Did mm -hmm. you start with four libraries? I know, I've always thought that uh, we've always had trouble that a lot of these bigger vendors don't work with small groups. It's just not worth it for them. Um, so that's why we've had to try and um, set up groups that are statewide from commission mm -hmm. or sometimes even um, working in conjunction with other states groups and things. How did you convince them to do something just for four libraries? I'm curious. Well, <laughs> we were, the benefit was that this was a brand new thing Recorded Books was doing. Ah, okay. So they were trying to just get anyone interested in it. And so I said, I'm interested. These libraries are interested, but this is the only way we can do it because we want a collection that's worthwhile. Um, because otherwise it was pay the platform fee and then we'd have enough money for 15 or 20 magazine titles, you know, which is nice, but it's... Not a lot, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not... It doesn't give you kind of the, the, the range of, of motion to say, look at all these various topics we can, we can provide for you outside of our print magazine subscriptions. Um, so, so you got lucky in and, and noted and getting into the Zinio that was a new service that they were yeah more um, just trying to get the word out and once you guys start using it, I know mm -hmm. it's definitely become a lot more popular. I, I hear hear it all the time from libraries talking about it as this new thing that and also yeah. Hoopla that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so it we benefited from being early adopters. There you go. Um, yep. Through all of the kinks that existed, um, and then. It was too late. We were already a group, so they, you know, they couldn't split us up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so now they're stuck with us, which is fine because yeah. now, um, I mean, there's, I mean, just the conference. I got to talk to Chris, who's the recorded books rep for Nebraska, and he was showing um, a comic, a comic book resource that's coming through recorded books soon, and Ooh. there's uh, nice. gaming. Um, so you. Essentially, you download a program and then you can check out games for free, like Lego Marvel and Lego Batman, and and I mean, cool games and silly games and kids games and big kid games. Um, and so it it's other opportunities for us to even 
be able to play with something. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes you look at something, a product coming out from a vendor, and it's you know right away it's out of your price range. But right. you can say, hey, I belong to this group. Can you give me a demo because this is something I can take back? And we and we can show it to 20 other libraries. Exactly, yeah. and we encourage all libraries to talk to any vendor and bring anything they want to the group. Uh, the the Gale Virtual Resource um, Library phone call came because they called North Platte, um, and North Platte said, "Well, you know, we're part of this group, so here, call Jake and <laughs> and and have a chat with him." And it looks really cool, and it's simultaneous access um, reference materials and nonfiction materials, and it's all indexed and. I mean, it's mm -hmm. certainly something that I think some of the group would be interested in, and um, Gail is willing to, to work with us to make a price that works for everybody. So, I mean, it, it. I think my favorite part about this whole experience is that at, at some point you kind of think the vendors are, are trying to get as much money out of you as they can, which, you know, is kind of the, their game, because that's how they get paid. But they're not... They're not the bad guys because they're trying to sell you something they think you like, um, and so mm -hmm. it it they want to work. They want to bend over backwards for you if you can show them that you're willing to spend money. So <laughs> we say, hey, we're a group of twenty libraries willing to spend money, and then yeah. they bend over backwards for us. And hopefully, this will get the att their attention that they started small with just the four. And it it can benefit them in in the, in the future. They need to look ahead. That just you know st you know they could do this in other states. Just find a small group or offer to do something like this, and then it could eventually grow like this exactly. one has, and hopefully will grow even more. I assume. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think for anyone listening who's interested in um, any kind of consortium or co-op stuff, um, it never hurts to ask. I, and I think that's the one thing that I did was. It all started when I asked my boss, hey, can I talk to these other libraries into Carnegie, uh, Grand Island, and Holdridge about you know, doing this? And then they said yes, so then I went to record books and said, hey, can we do this? Because you want to sell it, we want to buy it. Mm -hmm. um, so it never hurts to ask. And the other, I think the other benefit is that being, from, being in the state, when you say, well, I can get these four libraries together, and we're the same size as Hastings, and you sell to Hastings, so you should mm. sell to us too. Yeah. So, and it, 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 I mean, if you're a small library, and you get other four small libraries, and you're now the, you know, relatively the size of Kearney or Grand Island or Hastings, then just say, hey, give us the deal that you gave them. So it's not hard, and it's, it's. It doesn't hurt to ask. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the. And I think that's good to to hear from you that I know I'm sure a lot of the smaller libraries are. Unsure of what to do, afraid of that, you know, are intimidated by these big you know, the companies. And they hear that this, the vendors are just they're, can, everything's too expensive. They'll never sell to anybody small like us. So why even bother? It's just too much to do. Right. Um, but you guys pulled it off without any sort of big organization behind you backing you up or any extra funding or anything. You just kind of you can do it. Um, yes. And if you want in on some of this stuff, we've got something going here that could be very, that you could just join in with. Exactly. Um, I didn't put up my contact information. That was going to so. be my other question. My last question I have here is how can somebody um, join? Is it call Jake? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, come on, Internet. Call or email, I assume. Call or email, yeah. I'll put up my contact information as soon as my connection to the Internet stops <laughs> being persnickety. Uh, goodness. As you said you're on your laptop earlier. Is this your the yeah, wireless being a little wonky? Yeah. It's two things at once trying to talk to each other. Mm. Um, but, yeah, certainly give a call um, or an email, and I can... Put in your numbers using Steve's magical formula to figure out um, what your library's um, what your library's obligation would be. Mm -hmm. um, we we kind of have kind of right now we're in two windows to to roll in um, because right now we get invoice invoice twice once in October for um, the one click and then once in February for Zinio. So um, 
for the smaller libraries, it might be one $500 payment at once in February um, because the small libraries that joined got it to, do, to, got to be 250 and 250 um, And if you're a bigger library, um, it might be something we wait until October because that's we're striving to get everything to do in October, so it's everyone's fiscal year start over. Mm, um, nice. Mm -hmm. And that can all be rolling good. Oh. Krista, can you steal the screen back and throw out my contact information? Because I don't um, think my... Is that, doable? is that possible to add that to the slide? I'm sorry to um, ask. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. Uh, hang on <laughs> just a sec here. Um... Do, 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 do. Can't, can't seem to do today. I've got your contact info here that's uh, at the library. Yep. Or is there that's somewhere good. on the library's page where you've got your info, or should I just do what we have here? Just do what you have is okay. probably best. Yeah. Um, two. Yeah, if you can't get yourself so but before I do that, yeah, does anybody have any um last questions for Jake? Anything um uh, about the systems, about the, the uh, services they have, about the co-op. Um, do you want to see him show anything? Well, I don't know about that now that your internet's not doing well. But <laughs> uh, type in any questions you have here, and I will move this over. Ooh. Um, I have, um, as I do for all our shows, in our Delicious account, I have put in um, the URLs that you're putting up there for each of uh, the services. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, the Zinio and the OneClick Digital um, that are the specifically Sioux Central Nebraska digital co-ops uh, collections. Um, so if you're interested in wanting to know you know, what kind of things are in there to see what you'd have access to, um, those are their um, specific links to those. And um, in your initial email, if you want a test, I mean, if you want a dummy barcode so you can give the services a test run yourself before you make any commitments for your library, um, I'd be happy to oh, get yeah. you. so people can get a trial, yeah. so to speak. People can try it out. Um, they can just use exactly what they be buying into so they know exactly what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. So um, I like it. I think it's great. I mean, it makes me kind of a salesman type of person when I want other people to do it, but mostly it's because yeah. I want my library to pay less so I can buy more cool things. <laughs> of course. Um, it works out for everybody, yeah. Um, but it's, it's for the, we did the, the math. For a library, that, a small library paying $500, so for Blue Hill, um, they pay, I think it was a dollar for every three audiobooks um, in, in, in just in, in one click. So, uh, I mean, you can't get three audiobooks for a dollar anywhere. So the price is super cheap. Um, just in terms of, even if you're a smaller library, um, I mean, it might seem like a lot of money, but when you take it divided by the the amount of content that you have access to, uh, it's really the it's you couldn't get it cheaper anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I sound like a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, just look how cheap I can get. You're like, oh. Not a really, join us. Here's a better way us. I've got thing here to make it easier to figure out your info, your contact info. Thank you. I know what I was showing before was just a mishmash of stuff, but here you go. <laughs> so if anybody wants <laughs> to join, this is Jake's contact info I copied from our system here. And there we go. So any anything else you need to want to share about it? We're almost to 11 o'clock here, top of the hour again. I have, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> That's okay. Does anybody have any questions? Anything? Anything you want to know about it? Uh, we've got a bunch of people on the line here, but they—I don't know if we've been answering all their questions, which is great. Um, anything you want to know about it from Jake before we wrap up for today? Give you a last few minutes to type in what anything. No. All right. Then I guess we'll wrap it up for today. 
Well, thank you very thank, much for letting yeah, me. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jake. Um, I had heard about this oh, over the summer sometime, and I, f- I feel kind of bad. You said you've been doing it since 2013. I had not heard of it before. Um, but I heard about it at a meeting I was at earlier this summer, and I had written myself this little scribbled note, and I wasn't even sure what the name of it was. I like, called Jake about the co-op thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hadn't gotten to it. And then it was in our a state library association, Nebraska Library Association and the School Librarians Association annual conference. Um, he was, as he said, you were on the uh, um, on the schedule there. And I said, there we go. I'm going to get it on the show. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad we did. So this is, this is a great service. I'm glad that you guys um, pulled this together for everybody and um, are keeping it going. I hope you don't get too overwhelmed. <laughs> No, it should be fine. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Looks like nobody's got any urgent questions while we've been chatting here, so we will wrap it up for today. Um, Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you, everyone, for attending. If you want to join the Central Nebraska Digital Co-op, contact him. There is his info on our screen. Um, Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. It will be posted to our website in the archive section here. I don't say anything about the slides because you don't need to send me those two slides a year. is not a problem. <laughs> I will have yeah. links to the recording and those two um, services that are available in here so you'll be able to watch the recording afterwards. Um, later today, it'll, tomorrow, it'll be available. Um, other than that, I hope you join us uh, next week when our topic, which just got added to our schedule this week, is what is Nebraska Access? Also, the collection of databases and things you can use um, that we offer through here through the Library Commission, our uh, statewide database program. Um, Olana Novotny and Susan Nisley, who run this program, are going to be with us next Wednesday morning to tell us all about it and how what's available in there. Um, lots of things have changed with it. We've got some great new services in there. I think it's it's really cool what you can what the resources you can find in there now. Um, so join us next week for that to um, see what's new about Nebraska Access and if. If you are big on Facebook, we do also have a Facebook page. You can like us. Please do like us over there, and I post notifications. If slowly comes up here, um, reminders of when a new show is starting up. Like here, I did log in right now. This for this morning show. When recordings are available, I post notices on here as well for our shows. So um, if you are big on Facebook and want to keep up with what you're doing, you can um, go ahead and like us over there. Other than that, thank you very much for joining, and we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.